Okay, so let's take a look at syllogisms and you will find a lot of syllogisms in the decision-making subset. So don't try and avoid them or triage them because they are going to come up quite a lot. So missing them out will obviously reduce your score by quite a lot. So let's take a look at what syllogisms are. So basically they are a bunch of random, weird, illogical sentences and in the exam they will provide you with different conclusions and you have to see whether these conclusions fit with the illogical sentences. Now the distraction is the illogical sentence that doesn't really make any sense and you have to ignore that and use your own logical thinking to see whether these conclusions or conclusion fits with the statement or the sentence and don't worry we'll go through an example. So let's take a look at this. So this is just the foundations for what a syllogism actually is. So let's take a look at the statement. So, oops, sorry. <laughs> Billy is a medical student. Now, a simple, normal statement, nothing confusing. Billy is a medical student. So imagine this is Billy. Billy is a medical student. Now let's look at a different statement. All medical students are smart. So we've got two statements. Billy is a medical student. It's simple facts, you should be able to understand that. Number three, all medical students are smart. Now, what happens if we combine these two statements? What does it tell us? So, it tells us that since all medical students are smart, and Billy is a medical student, then we can deduce that Billy is smart. These three statements, so Billy is a medical student, all medical students are smart, and Billy is smart, these three statements make up an argument consisting of two premises and a conclusion. Then I hear you say, what on earth is a premise? So a premise is a statement that can justify a conclusion, and it is an assumption that something is true. So for a conclusion to hold, you must believe that all the premises are true. So the premise number one, so Billy's a medical student, you must believe that is true. And all medical students are smart, you have to also believe that that is true. And as a result, then you will be able to create this conclusion and this conclusion can actually hold and is actually correct. So Billy is smart as a result. So number one, Billy is a medical student. So that's premise number one. And then all medical students are smart, that's premise number two. And then as a result of these two premises, the conclusion is Billy is smart. Now, always assume that these premises are actually true, even if they don't make any sense. Like for example, if it said, all fruits can talk, a banana is a fruit and it can laugh. Well, since all fruits can talk, and that's the first premise, and a banana is a fruit, and a banana can laugh, then I can deduce from that that a banana can laugh and talk because it's a fruit, because all fruits talk. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, comment down below or message us on Instagram and I will answer your question straight away. But hopefully that should make sense and basically this is the foundation for syllogisms. So let's take a look at an example that you would find in the exam. So, all of the vegetables sold at the market stall are either red or green. Most of the green vegetables have leaves and none of the red vegetables have seeds. So then you get a question following on from those premises, those statements saying, place yes if the conclusion follows, place no if the conclusion does not follow. And then you get a list of conclusions and for each one you have to say whether yes, do they follow or no, they don't follow. Now, looking at this question, you're probably thinking, okay, um, how am I meant to do that in my head because my head hurts, I'm under time pressure, I don't think I'm able to do it. Yes, you can do it, but there are a few different techniques of going around this and answering this question. Now, if you can do this in your head, amazing, I salute to you because like majority students can't do this in their, do this uh, like sort of question in their heads. So 
if you can do it in your head, good on you because that is really amazing. But if not, don't worry. So we'll go through different techniques as to how to approach this sort of question. 